Hi, all. Stephen Roselle, Senior Technical Specialist with Autodesk here. And by now, you've probably heard the news. Bifrost extension has officially been announced. Uh, I'm actually here at SIGGRAPH right now in LA where we announced it and it's hot off the press. So I want to do a series of videos that cover Bifrost. And there's a lot of information out there. Uh, so you, there's plenty of material out there to pull from, but I'm gonna give you kind of my take on things as I have learned it along the way and you're gonna be learning it as well. There's a lot to learn, but it's a really powerful system. So Bifrost is a node-based uh, programming system so you can basically do programmatic type proceduralism uh, and uh, when you install it or when you upgrade to 2019.2 which contains it you'll have two things one is a bifrost browser which is basically a library of pre-built bifrost compounds pre-built net networks that do specific things uh, a cloud a muzzle flash or some sort of a torch or whatever you can drag and drop these into your scene use them as is or you can reverse engineer them and there is another menu item that's green called the Bifrost Graph Editor. Now, the Bifrost Graph Editor is basically your, your compound editor, your node editor, basically where you do your kind of uh, node-based programming, your authoring environment. Uh, right now, this is empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new graph. And you can see I've got an input and an output. This allows me to bring data into the graph. This allows me to output data from the graph into the viewport. Uh, or potentially to like a, a cache file or something like that. But what I'm going to do right now is just some really, really basic editing. So you can start from a compound that already has a lot of complexity in it, or you can build something from scratch. So that's how we're going to start. So in order to do something, I need to have some data to work with. So I'm actually just going to create an object. I'll create a sphere. Uh, this could be a particle object. This could be a sphere, different types of data. And I can basically just drag that directly into the Bifrost graph. And that will essentially be a pointer to that object. You can see here that this is pointing to P-Sphere 1. Uh, I could actually bring in multiple shapes. I can change this after the fact. But for now, I'm just going to work on this simple sphere. And I'm not going to worry about this input node. We'll talk about that in a second. And by default, I can just drag and drop the output of my uh, mesh node into this output. It will basically display the result of that in the viewport. Problem is the results are not very interesting because right now that basically just results in a, essentially a copy of that sphere. Now it is directly connected. So if I were to go in and say move some vertices around and let me actually shade this so that you can see it here. I'll turn on my wire on shaded. I can move some vertices around and you can see it's almost like an instance in that regard. Uh, but I can also go in and I can do things like uh, change the topology. So I can go in and you know res this up. Say I want to res this up to uh, whatever 40 by 20. I can res that up or I can go uh, down to, you know, the actual face level and I can do something like an extrude and I can, you know, pull these these faces out like so. And you can see that any edit that I make to that mesh just gets passed downstream into Bifrost and then something happens in here. But right now, nothing. But eventually something will happen and then that will get output back into the graph. So it's procedural in nature. So if I change anything upstream, that's just going to change the flow of data that's going through that graph. So that will become a lot more clear here in a second. But let's back up a few steps. I'm just going to undo all that. And before I actually make that connection, I want to, uh, to the output, I want to actually do something. So right now, I don't want to just output the same exact shape. I want to augment that shape in some way. So in order to do this, I've got a library of nodes. I hit the tab key, and that will bring up a list of all of the different nodes that I have access to. Now I have a whole bunch of stuff in here. So for instance, uh, if I go to the core section, there's even a sub list here. Uh, I can do things like logic where I can go in and do like if and less and 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 equal to. I can go in and do type conversions where I can convert data to from a boolean to a float or a float to an integer. Uh, I can go in and I can do math where I could do uh, multiply, subtract, add, um, exponential stuff, uh, linear interpolation, all kinds of stuff. And this is very granular. I'm not going to get too much into that yet. Um, I can bring in F curves. I can do um, different types of iteration. I can do for each, do whiles. This is all programmatic type stuff. So you can basically do visual programming directly in here with nodes and connections. Now, uh, for those that aren't that technically minded, I'm not going to go into the super granular details just yet. We're going to do something really basic. What I want to do is do some operations on the vertices of this object. So at the vertex level, I want to modify uh, all those vertices, those points. So in order to do that, I have to separate out the vertices. So right now, this is a mesh output. If I actually just connect that and I look at this pipe here, if I add what's called a watch point, what that watch point will do is it will basically tell me all the data that's flowing through this path. So what you can see here is I've got face data, uh, I've got vertex data, 
I've got point normal information, the positions obviously, um, and I can add data to this. So if I were to add a UV set or if I were to add color per vertex, that data will flow through this, this pipe. Um, so what I wanna do is figure out exactly what data I need to work with. So let's turn off that watch point and let's uh, separate or rather kind of call this down into a, a subset of that. So I'm gonna hit my tab key and I'm gonna start typing in some letters. Now, if I type in some letters, like say G-E-T, then it will filter out all of the nodes that have the letters G-E-T in it. Now you'll notice that I have these underscores here. So I have get array indices with an underbar. Uh, if I type in uh, something like GI, what that will do is it will also include the underscore. So it will look for geo instance, for instance. Um, so I know there's a node in here called get point position. So I can type in GPP and that brings up anything that's related to GPP. So I have get particle properties and I have get point position. So it's just a quick way of getting to the node that you need without having to go into these lists and sub lists and so on, these menus and sub menus. So I'm gonna get a point position and I'm gonna take that point position and I'm gonna do something with it. Uh, first, I have to feed the mesh into the geometry input. And then now this is going to separate out the, the vertex positions from that piece of geometry. Now I actually need to do something with that. Uh, so what I'll do is a simple multiplication. I'll go in and I will type in MUL. There's a multiply node. I'll bring that into my scene. I wanna multiply uh, those point positions by something. So I'll take those, feed them in. When I cr connect that pipe, that input port will just inherit the data type of whatever is, is coming from it. So I have point positions, that's just going to inherit uh, that, that data type. If that was a Boolean, it would inherit that data type. You can actually change it after the fact, and we'll get into that later. I'm not gonna deal with that right now. But right now what I wanna do, uh, and excuse me, because I don't because of the recording, I, I don't have a ton of screen real estate, but what I wanna do is multiply this by value. So I'm gonna go in and multiply this by a simple value node. So I'll type in VAL, there's my value node. Uh, whoops, get the wrong one, no big deal. I'll just do that again, V-A-L-U, there we go. Uh, so now I'm gonna take that value node. Right now that value is zero. Uh, I'm gonna hook that into the point positions. Um, I'm not gonna change it yet because I wanna show you the result. And now I've basically multiplied all the vertex positions by a value of zero. And then I wanna set that back over the original sphere. So I'm gonna go in here and type SPP, which is set point position. And that does exactly that. It basically takes those modified vertex positions and it allows me to overwrite the vertex positions on the original geometry. So I'm taking the original geometry and I'm compositing uh, those vertex positions on that. And what you'll notice is that that bifrost object has disappeared basically. So uh, the bifrost object is uh, the BIF, B-I-F, uh, one, two are the, the objects that I've output. I've actually made multiple connections. That's why I have more than one. But you can see nothing, uh, nothing seems to be happening. It's because this is set to a value of zero. If I have this set to a value of two, then all of a sudden that's going to scale out all of the vertex positions from the, the origin essentially. So if I offset this, now you can see that I've got uh, basically uh, twice the size. If I set this to be 1.5, now it's gonna be uh, 150% basically. So what I'm doing is I'm just simply multiplying or scaling essentially the value of each vertice uh, and then overriding the original, the, the original points. So as simple as that. And then you can start to daisy chain these. So I can basically start to just kind of layer on these different edits. So let's say I wanted to do an add now. I'll come in here and I'll do an add and now I'll take the output of that and I will add to it basically. So I've already multiplied it. Now I'm gonna go in, right click here, create a value node. And um, that's another way of doing it, by the way. You can just right click on a channel and it'll allow you to create a value node or you can hit the tab key. Uh, and now the value node is going to allow me to modify that. So uh, what I wanna do here is make sure that the value node is of the, the right data type. So for instance, if I wanna change this after the fact, uh, the type here, I can change this by going in and setting this to a specific value. I could make this something like a floating point and that's gonna give me one value. So I could say, I wanna offset this by five uh, and that's going to basically move it along every axis by five. So if I set this to be three, uh, it's gonna offset it along X, Y, and Z uh, by three. Uh, if I change this to a vector, then it's gonna allow me to access each individual axis. So I wanna basically set this to be a vector three float, say okay. And now you can see I can control each one. So now I can say offset by X, and then I can offset by Y separately, and then I can likewise offset by Z independently. 
So I'm just going to go in and do an offset along X. And I'm going to remove the original offset. There, so there's a separate offset. This is at the vertex level. So all of the node editing I'm doing here is at the vertex level. I still have an offset on the transform as well. Uh, that's set to four right now. I'm just going to set that back to zero so that all the edits that are going to happen at the vertex level, not at the transform level. So the transform zeroed out. Now I've got this value for the scale, uh, which I can control. So I'll scale that up to two, and then I'll offset this by maybe, let's just say five. And so now I've scaled every vertex and I have offset every vertex by those values. Now I mentioned this before, I've got this watch point. If I take, add that watch point back in, remember this watch point will show me all the data flowing through that pipe. So again, I've got vertex data, UV data, um, normal information, and so on. Uh, that's that purple pipe. So the purple represents an object uh, data type. I rem remove that, and then let's say I go downstream, you can see the green represents uh, something else. It's not an actual, it's not an actual object data type. This is actually going to be uh, essentially a vector. Um, but if I add a watch point here, then I have something very different. This is showing me not everything that's flowing through the entire geometry pipe, but it's just showing me what I've extracted. I've extracted the, the point positions. And so it's showing me that I have 382 vertices, essentially points flowing through this graph. So if I were to go in and let's say, for instance, res this up. So I just go in and say, let's make this whatever, 40 by 40. Now I've increased the size, uh, the number of vertices that are flowing through this graph. Now, instead of having uh, whatever that was, 400, now I've got 1,500. And it works at, the, at the, the component level too. So I can actually, if I undo that, go back to 2020. If I were just to go in and grab some vertices here and do something like uh, uh, subdivide, you can see right now I've got 382 vertices flowing through here. I'll do an add divisions. And now I've increased the number of vertices flowing through this graph to 922. So that's basically kind of fundamentally what's going on here. I'm basically hooking data or sending data from Maya into the graph. I'm hooking it into the graph. That data is flowing through the graph. And then I'm basically operating on that data or I'm augmenting that data. So, um, you know, I may be working on vertices. I may be working on normals. I may be working on color per vertex information. Whatever it may be that's flowing through that graph, I can modify it using these various nodes that will allow me to augment that data. Uh, and in this case, it's just doing simple addition and multiplication. So that's basically how it works. And, and now I'm going to take it a step further and do something a little bit more interesting. So this is kind of part one, just going over the very, very basic fundamentals. Part two, I'm going to do something a little bit more complex and uh, take this a step further.